Hello, what's up? I am at my mama's house. I do not have any fancy equipment to record this like I had before. But anyways, I used a shit ton of ChatGPT during my exam prep, especially for the past four months. It's actually an insane resource if you use it well. I'm not saying you have to use it as a replacement to your books, but it definitely helps a lot when it comes to theory exams and exam prep. And honestly, with a lot of things. I'm gonna tell you five ways I actually use ChatGPT and how you can use it to its best potential. First thing, summarization. I think the best thing that ChatGPT has done for me is to summarize things. Let's say I read something in surgery. I apologize for that. I read something in surgery with regards to managing bleeding viruses. Now I've read everything from Bailey. I do, and you know what? I've made my notes as well. But at the same time, I want this one short, crisp resource that I can go through right before my exam because the surgery syllabus is way too vast for me to read the book a day before the exam. All I did before the surgery paper was read my personal notes and read ChatGPT notes that I had asked it to make. I'm not sure about the plagiarism factor of this, but ChatGPT actually takes information directly from Bailey and all the books that you ask it to take it from. So all the sentences that I do see in the summarization I asked ChatGPT to make are from the books that I've already read, so it's easier for me to remember it. And also it looks good in answers because teachers like it when you quote books. Most times you'll have to give it like two to three follow-up prompts to get exactly what you want. For example, for most of the things that I need a summary for, I needed the surgical management, I needed the steps of the surgery or I needed, uh, you know, specific things like contraindications to this procedure or indications for this procedure. So I'd write it down in a list. I'd make a very direct and very crisp prompt and I'd get a full-fledged answer. Like I would definitely love to supplement uh, one or two of my answers one I made for varices, one I made for sepsis, and they're so good, they're genuinely so, so good. So I would take all these answers and I'll put them in my notion. So I had a notion, I have a notion for everything that I do and especially for academics. So for each subject, I had a separate notion where I put in my chat GPT answers. Best part is there are a lot of topics that, you know, the teachers probably haven't taught that well or they're really spread out in the books. You can't really find them in one location. This is very true with books like Daily. It's not really well written in a book or they haven't completely, completely taught it. For example, even for anesthesia, I don't remember a lot of anesthesia. There's no particular book that I use to reference for anesthesia. Apart from Shanbag, you know, for the drugs. I didn't really use any other books, so I made most of my answers from ChatGPT, from Marrow. If you ask it to reference from Marrow, if you ask it to reference from PubMed, it does that for you. I think it's an insane app. Again, I'm not sure about the ethical, legal proceedings of this, but use it as long as you can. Because sometimes it allows you to um, quote directly from books, but sometimes it doesn't. But regardless, keep rechecking the information that it's giving you because the only way I made sure that I trusted what information it was giving me is when I rechecked it with the book. So it's just making it easy for me to revise before an exam. I'm not going to directly full on blindly trust the answer it's giving me. And make sure you're nice to charge you because then um, when AI takes over the world, they need to remember you as the nice one. So I keep saying, thank you, chat GPT. thank you. I always imagine it as this really cute Wattpad guy. So second thing I used it for is question and answers. So the, me and Sneha, we used to, um, let's say we started, we want to study renal system. So what we did was we asked ChatGPT, make 10 short questions and long questions according to uh, final year MBBS CBME guidelines, make them case based and provide the answers separately. So what this would do is it would give us a list of cases. We would solve them. We would get the answer. We would read the topic from Davidson. And after reading it from Davidson, we try to go back and see if it matches with the ChatGPT answer. And then, yeah, that's it. That's how we finish the entirety of uh, medicine renal within, let's say, five, six hours, just by using ChatGPT to make good enough case-based nice questions, which covers all topics. Third thing is MCQs. So the thing is, in su subjects such as Gynac and surgery, uh, the MCQs were really weird. They'd come from different parts of the chapters that you would not have touched. So I, which, with each chapter that I finished, I went to ChatGPT and I entered the same stuff that I entered for the Q&A, but I told it make MCQs, make them bizarre and make them hard. And it would give me MCQs, I would try to answer them, then I would ask it to give me the answers for the MCQs and it would give me the answers. So it was pretty solid and again, verify it with your book so that you know it's correct. Fourth thing is, of course, mnemonics and easy learning. Honestly, mnemonics ChatGPT gave were really lame, dude, but like sometimes they were pretty nice. Most times I'd make my own mnemonics and they were 
heinous. They were bad. They were I cannot reveal it in public kind of mnemonics. So I would much rather not. But if you're someone who's okay with those lame ass mnemonics that ChatGPT gives you, then go ahead with it. But I don't like them much. But you can use it definitely. You can also ask it to make PPTs. By crazy, yeah, yeah, yeah. App. Second and fifth thing that I did use it for was to explain concepts. Um, and it actually does a great job at explaining concepts. The entirety of renal tubular acidosis I learned from ChatGPT because there aren't good enough videos online for it. So you can ask it to explain this concept in layman words. You can ask it to explain the concept using medical words. Uh, there was this one time I wasn't understanding something about some anion gap situation. And I told it, can you explain it to me? using formulas in a numerical basis and it did it it actually did it and it made sense and i would you know screenshot these explanations and keep them separately again these are five amazing amazing ways i use chat if you look at my entire history for the past four months with chat it's just studies it's just just studies and it's helped me a shit ton it's really really helped me because I um, was always, I'm, I'm someone who likes to read every single thing before the actual exam, a day before the exam. And it gets really difficult to cover all topics in final year. And having ChatGPT notes and having my own notes separately really, really helped me cover almost all topics before each exam. But again, I need to emphasize on this again and again and again. It will not work if you've not already read the topic. You are not replacing the book. You are making an adjunct to the book. Um, if I can, I'm going to try providing you all access to all my ChatGPT Notion notes. But they're very, um, they're very haphazard and they're of random topics. I'm not sure how much that's going to help you. But if you do want it, let me know and I will post a separate post regarding all my notes later. But yeah, that's it guys. So that was the video and um, I'm really excited. Internship's going to start, although I'm joining a week late. Uh, it's okay. I want the results to come soon. And of course, you're getting a results vlog. If they're nice, of course.